Perfect. Uh, so thank you all for receiving us in the US Pavilion for this year's uh, Venice Architecture Biennale. It's my pleasure. Thank can you, you. Can you tell us a bit about the concept and how do you, with the team, try to answer the question on how we will live together? Uh, sure. That's two questions, though. Uh, so the f for the first, the the concept was to do a show on the topic of wood framing, which um, is a very common method of construction in the United States. Over 90% of the houses in the United States are built using wood framing, soft wood lumber, and uh, this light wood framing technique that was developed mostly in the U.S. during the last 150 to 200 years. Um, but elsewhere in the world, it's not very commonly used. and for a lot of reasons. The material is a little bit weak and splinters easily. Uh, even once it's built properly, it's, it se seems to be a little bit thin and light. And so it's not what we usually think of when we think of architecture as something you know, that's more permanent and heavy and that lasts for you know, hundreds of years. Um, and because it's so ordinary and because it seems to be a little bit light and inexpensive, it, it's been overlooked in architectural discourse for a long time. Like, architects don't really talk about wood framing. It's a little bit taken for granted. Um, but Paul Preisner, my co-curator, and I think that um, there's some new architecture could come out of paying a little bit more attention to wood framing and how it works and how it could work. Um, in terms of the, the topic, it's, it's funny. The way that the schedule usually works for, uh, for the Biennale the State Department, who chooses the proposal and provides the grant that is um, you know, a big portion of the money that's used for, for the exhibition, that whole proposal is due um, a couple of months before the exhibition topic is announced. And that's typical. That's, mm. that's how that, that almost always goes. So we didn't know that um, this question of how, how we live together was going to be the theme. As it turns out, it, it works with the theme in a, in a couple of ways, I think, pretty nicely. Um, one is that wood framing is a very is very accessible. It's sort of its history and also its culture that um, you know anybody can go pick up a couple of two by fours and start to build something themselves. You don't need special machinery or technical skill. You can nail it together. Um, you know, so it's, it's kind of easy to do. And because of that in the US, you know, everybody's house is made of the same stuff, or at least the same structural system. Like you can't, you, you know, it doesn't matter how much money you have, you can't buy a, a better two by four. So, um, so it's a, it's a bit of an egalitarian system. Like it's sort of like the same for everybody and also an open system. Like you can do things yourself and there's a lot of invention that's possible with it and has, and has, you know, has, has been done with it. So it's, uh, you know, that kind of like, communal aspect of it or the potential for it to be to be communal I think really responds to the to the question and then there's some examples in the show of uh, yeah, because you know, how it's been done we're sitting in a model that has a very strong presence in the Giardini that uh, shows this uh, building technique but also inside you have this uh, other part that we will show in the interview the the research is yeah. there something that new that you found yeah a lot yeah um, yeah, I mean, it's a topic that, you know, you know or, or a sort of a construction system that, that I think a lot of people are, are aware of, and, and including myself, but until we started to you know, learn the history of it, and we worked with students and did a lot of research at the University of Illinois Chicago, where, where Paul and I both teach, and where some of the other contributors here that also teach, and um, yeah, we learned a lot of things. I mean, so, you know, just the, the, the history of it, like why it, why it was used. And in the 18th century, when there's this period of, of you know, rapid expansion, why wood framing was perfectly suited for it and ended up being what people, you know, the way that people you know, learned how to build things was, was pretty interesting. You, know, you start to see the, 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 the variety of examples. So it's not all just kind of like houses that are, look like houses, but there were, you know, there are ge geodesic domes made out of wood framing, and there were, um, you know, even building types that I wasn't aware of, like, like we have, you know, some models in there, and one of them is a block house, which is a kind of military post building mm -hmm. that was built, I, as far as we can tell, all the examples we found were in the, in the 19th century. They were built in different parts of the world, but it's a very strange 
you know, type of building that, that really is recognizable as a type that I didn't even know about, you know. So, so kind of like getting into the research, you, you dig up some of these things and, you know, learn about that and, and maybe see the, like, the culture and how we live in the U.S. a little bit differently, too, and start to think about. And what do you think about the, the potential uh, of your research? Is there something that you think you will, you will like to continue? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, I think that, uh, first of all, I mean, we, we hope that there will be some things that may, might come out of this that might be of interest to a lot of architects, um, you know, not just to us. I think, you know, Paul and I run independent practices, like we're, we each have our own office and we do different projects on our own most of the time. And then every once in a while we do something together. And uh, I can say for me personally, like there are a whole bunch of things. I mean, I think that there's a, you know, this, like the, it's, it's so quick and easy to try different things with wood framing. Um, and and you, you, you can see this also in the history where maybe, you know, in the 50s and 60s, there were people who just tried to kind of make houses different from one another and very like, by, you know, uh, uh, kind of crude, but really by bizarre ways, like just making, uh, just putting a tiny dormer over the door or uh, a, t a tiny gable roof over the door, or like making the address letters huge or, or making a roof like two or three times as tall as, it, as, as we're, what we're used to now or something like that. So um, all of those manipulations of proportion and, and then also in repetition, and things like that that produce this kind of like quirky, eccentric, idiosyncratic architecture. Um, I'm interested in those and, and how and you know how you either then can formalize those or how you can exaggerate or intensify them. So, I mean, yeah, for me, I think there's that. I think there's also like you know we started. There's all these models inside that are that are models of the framing of different buildings that are either important in the history of framing or were important types in, in you know American society. And um, it, in building the models, you start to think like, well, actually, you could do stuff with the framing. Like, you could start to actually extend it, or, or you know, pack it, or um, you know, like kind of change it in ways that would then it wouldn't just get covered up and be gone, but would actually then influence the you know the form or organization of a uh, house or other building. Perfect. So, yeah. So I think there's I think there's a lot there, and hopefully other people will find some stuff too. So. Yeah.